Berlinale Film Festival 2012, an international stage for German films? In the interview, film director and Academy Award winner Volker Schlöndorf. Volker Schlöndorf, your latest movie uh, is being shown at the 62nd Berlin Film Festival here in the Panorama section. It's called Calm at Sea. What's it all about? Uh, well, it's once again World War II. Uh, my generation can't get rid of it. Uh, it has a very personal relation because uh, I came to France about 10 years after the war when I was 17 in Brittany and I heard that there had been some very unpleasant incident around there. I did not know what had happened. Uh, only lately, a couple of years ago, I learned about it. Uh, namely that a 17-year-old, the age I was when I came to France, um, was shot there together with 50 others. Uh, because a German officer had been shot in the street, 1941. Um, that is all a long, long time ago. Uh, but I thought it was like a, just a suspense story between the first shot where an officer is shot and then 33 hours later, 50 others are shot to make good or whatever as a punishment. And that in the Europe, in the French, German Europe, we are living in today, how was that possible and how did we manage to overcome it, uh, living so peacefully together? Uh, that, that was basically my, my approach to this thing, and, and which, which is approach of today, mm. not of a historical. And it's very interesting when you mention that point about the 17-year-old in question being exactly the same age as you were when you went to France immediately yeah. after the Second World War. Just tell us a little bit who that 17-year-old is. He's Guy Moquet. He's a very Guy important Moquet, figure in He France. is in France a, an icon. Um, a bit like in Germany, we have Sophie Scholl, who threw pamphlets at the university in Munich. Well, this friend, and was decapitated, uh, this French boy who threw um, pamphlets in a cinema in Paris uh, from the balcony uh, when he was only 16 uh, against uh, the German occupiers. Um, in case any Frenchman does anything against the German uh, occupation. And um, uh, I mean, nothing in their own beliefs prepared them to, to be hostage all of a sudden for deeds that others may do. It doesn't even enter their mind this kind of a collective guilt or a collective uh, uh, hostage situation. For, for individual acts of resistance. And um, it leads to the fact that, uh, that they become conscious, uh, well, this occupier is really an enemy of France. Uh, uh, it, this is not a friendly occupation, as our own government tries to tell us. Uh, and we got to resist. Uh, so the, 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 the irony of the thing is where Hitler meant to crash uh, the French mentality. In fact, he provoked the resistance. Um, when I asked you initially about the film, you said it was another film about the Second World War. And I know that it's interesting, you've made a couple of films down the, year about, uh, down the years about Germany's difficult history, about Germany's Nazi past. Is German filmmaking haunted? Is German filmmaking burdened by its difficult history? Uh, well, uh, look, uh, why should Quentin Tarantino uh, be allowed uh, to use this past uh, to tell, to make a movie? Um, it is simply part of our past. I don't think uh, next generations after me are crushed anymore by the feeling of guilt as we were. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this heritage is so enormous, uh, it will still be there a hundred years from now. And the other thing is that simply wartime produces more extreme situations and put people into conflicts that fortunately in peacetime are un unimaginable and therefore they make good stories. Okay, well then tell me about the, tell me about the young German, gen the young generation of German filmmakers. Are they able to make films about sort of, about ordinary Germans living ordinary lives? 
Well, that is, uh, I think, what uh, these German films are all about. Uh, the ones you can see at the Berlinale, uh, they all deal with today. And actually, when I'm at film schools debating with the students, uh, they tell me, oh, yeah, you uh, have the good part. You have your trauma, uh, which is World War II, so you can always work upon that. We don't have a trauma. Uh, and I say, bless you. And then one of them got up and says, yes, we do have a trauma and all our films deal with it. It's family. Uh -huh. And if you look <laughs> at it, uh, young people growing up, coming of age today, the trauma is indeed family, apparently. And that's what all these movies are about. That's very interesting. And how competitive? I mean, the German film industry are saying there are very many good young filmmakers. There's the Babel, Babelsberg studio down the road yeah. just outside Berlin, where you were very much involved. Where does that leave Germany? What's Germany standing in international filmmaking at the moment? Uh, well, in international filmmaking, uh, the German films look pale, I would say. They don't have... You see this, our post-war generation, it was easy to us in a sense, or it's all fast been a renders me to, to have a strong identity. Uh, if you tell your family conflicts, you know, to your neighbor, he'd say, I have my own family conflicts. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, stand out so much anymore. And, uh, and that's why they, I think they have difficulties to be, to be seen uh, abroad. Tell me about the, uh, the Berlin Film Festival. All eyes are on the Berlin Film Festival at the moment. Dieter Koslick, the director of the festival, said the, uh, the accent this time round would be on upheaval. That was a word he used about the process of political change in the world. It's always been a highly politicized festival. Is that the way it should be, in your view? Yeah, I think it, uh, he doesn't have a choice. You know, this, unlike Cannes or Venice, uh, this is not a beach festival where people come together in a nice season and a nice place. This is an urban festival, you know, with people going to work and then seeing a movie and so. So it is somehow closer to, to social realities and uh, to, to home of people. And um, I hope uh, that he will have some interesting films about what's going on in the world right now. I mean, last year with the separation uh, one here, and I think it'll win the Oscar for the best uh, uh, non-English speaking film this year. Good um, movie, very has, good movie. Uh, mm -hmm. From Iran. Mm -hmm. um, he has in the jury the Iranian filmmaker of that movie this year. Um, he is very open to films coming from all over the world. He has a hard time getting a Hollywood movie uh, because we're almost simultaneous with the Oscars. Uh, so he may be led to change the date of the festival. But uh, uh, so he has no choice. He opted for reality rather than the dream world. Mm -hmm. And one final question, in, in, this, uh, in this day and age of DVDs and downloading, how confident are you that cinema, the kind of cinema that, that you grew up with and that <laughs> I grew up with, you know, the movie theatre, the dark theatre with the big screen, yeah. is it going to survive? Uh, not the way we knew it. I think the, this golden age will probably not come back. The art houses went down, but our films are seen by more people than ever. Uh, you just saw Young Turles. I mean, that would not have been imaginable 20 years ago that you can see an old movie whenever you want to. Everything is available now. Volker Schlendorf, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>